Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome to another video. This is Doug and this is Doug Sells. Simple as that. We're going to do a sales update today. Not only that, we're not just going to do a sales update. Update. I'm going to show you my numbers for the last 31 days. Uh, I'm going to dig in deep. I'm going to show you a little Excel spreadsheet that I've made to keep up with what goes out and what comes in every month. I'm going to show you the struggle I'm having right now getting started and getting back into reselling it's been a real struggle so far so I'm, I'm gonna you know for those of you that are new to reselling i mean this is this is real life stuff here this is what can actually happen so you got to be very careful on how you approach things but yeah we're just gonna go over those numbers uh for a minute and then i'm gonna go over uh 10 or 11 items that i've sold uh, since my last sales update video, I haven't done a ton of sales, so it's kind of been hard to do weekly sales updates. So I'll just show you what I have. Uh, let's get right to it. All right, here we go, guys, right here. Chart for sales data across 31 days. Uh, today, I made no sales. Last seven days, I've done $198.52, which is a little bit better than I've done um, in previous weeks. Uh, the last 31 days, I've done $398.97. Now, this is all with only 340 items in my store. I say only, uh, but you know, to make money, you got to spend money and you got to have a lot of items. You got to keep the inventory coming in. And it just, the more you sell, the more active you are. eBay picks up, picks that up and puts you in their algorithm. It's just a thing. You got it, the more active. You know, the rich get richer sometimes uh, with eBay. So it's kind of hard for us part timers and small stores to really get going. But the last 90 days, I've done $697.82. Now, this is just on eBay. Now, the numbers I'm going to go through at the end of this uh, in my little Excel spreadsheet are going to show you January's numbers. Uh, that is with eBay, Poshmark, and Instagram. And it's going to show you February's numbers as well. And it's going to show you my yearly numbers so far reselling online. And like I said, I've been struggling, guys. So like the last 31 days, $398.97. Uh, when I was reselling before and before I quit and went on my hiatus from reselling, I was doing between $400 and $500 in sales a week. So that's what I'm used to. And that's why I say I'm struggling right now because I'm not reaching what I'm used to, and I'm not reaching the goal that I want to meet. So, but with that being said, it's going to take some time getting back into it. So let's just go right uh, to the sales that I've had in the past week and a half to two weeks, show you what's been selling. Okay. This is my loan sell on Poshmark. Poshmark has been very slow. I have been listing stuff uh, pretty consistently and very slowly building up my po Poshmark closet. Uh, but it's not near as big as my eBay uh, store right now, but I'll get there. I'll get everything on Poshmark eventually. But this is the only thing that sold on Poshmark is a pair of Levi Strauss 541 athletic taper jeans. This is actually a pair of jeans that I bought about a year and a half ago, and I didn't like the way they fit me. And let's just say I was very lazy about returning them and got to a point where I couldn't return them. So I was stuck with them. Uh, they're about $60 brand new, and I wore these one time, and so there are no tags on them. And I think I was trying to sell them for $35, but I ended up accepting an offer of $25 with uh, these. And since uh, Poshmark takes 20% of your sale, yes, that's right, 20%. So keep that in mind when you're on Poshmark. Uh, this netted me about $20. Uh, which will go into my bank account once this order is complete. Okay, next, this is just a, a cool little vintage sale here. I got a lot of little shirts like this that I know that aren't uh, big money shirts, but when it comes to my vintage, I kind of want to be uh, one of those places that has a little bit of everything, even little shirts like this. This says Elvis plays Israel. If we look at it, um, here we go. Elvis plays Israel. And it's got Elvis on it's got a little bit of stain there. And it says Cheswick Mission 1992 on the back. There is the tag and a couple more stains there. I disclose all those and always 
do measurements, guys. I like to show people how I measure it uh, so they know exactly how the measuring tape goes across the shirt. Uh, but this shirt, I didn't think it was a big money shirt at all. It sold exactly what I wanted it to sell for, and it sold for $14.99 uh, free standard shipping. So good deal there. Next, I also knew this was not going to be a big money item, but I may have gotten this in the, in the bins where you pay by the pound and it's Nike and it's a, it's an SEC school. It's a, you know, uh, a power five conference school. So they have a lot of fans. And so I'll sell it for 1499, but somebody I think offered me like 10 bucks for it. And so I went ahead and took it just to get it out of the store because you know, it's, and they were paying shipping too. They paid six fifteen uh, shipping. So, uh, I got that entire 10 bucks rather than also paying shipping so i probably could have priced this a little higher and sat on it longer but i didn't you know with it being nike um maybe i'll start sitting on things a little bit longer in the future but always pick stuff up especially if they have team names on them uh with the nike symbol on or adidas or under armor or anything like that so small sale but you need these small sales sometimes here's a cool vintage t-shirt it says pro hemp for the cannabis lovers out there this shirt's for you. I try selling this shirt for anywhere from 70 to 50 bucks. I've had it a very long time. I had it before I stopped reselling. And now I've brought it back to life since I've been reselling again. Tried selling it for different prices. Uh, went ahead and priced it for $24.99 plus free shipping. And uh, we made the sale. So finally got this one out of the store. I really feel like the market told me what this one was worth. Because uh, as soon as I priced it at, at a reasonable price, it was purchased and it is heading off to its new owner. Nothing on the back. Uh, it's a little dingy there. There's the 90s Fruit of the Loom tag. There's the measurements. Yeah, so i uh, happy with the sale. Next, and, and this is one of those cool little shirts I was kind of telling you about just a second ago. I said, I like to buy a little bit of everything so I can be one of those places that has a little bit of everything when it comes to vintage even if it's something as random as this this says um havana's oktoberfest polka pace race i don't know what that is but i looked it up did some uh little google searching in havana and they're talking about havana illinois they have an oktoberfest festival every year and they do this polka pace race every year and they still do it to this day this shirt is from the 80s. There's your 80s screen stars tag right there. Somebody, I think, I actually took a best offer on this. But so when you when you don't have a best offer on the listing, it doesn't say, you know, it doesn't put the line through it. But people can message you still and say, hey, will you take so and so for it? And then you can send them an offer. So I think somebody asked me uh, if I would take ten dollars for this um shirt and i said no i said no i can't do that i will never accept 50 percent less than the asking price that's just ridiculous that's not a good offer the low ball offer i did not do it um i said i can't go that low but if you meet me halfway i can do 17.99 and they accepted it so this shirt went out for 17.99 and the person who bought it was actually from havana illinois so they were looking for stuff from their hometown. All right, next, uh, this might have been, I don't know if, it's, if this was in my, one of my thrift hauls or not, my videos, uh, but I did get this on a recent thrift haul. It's a Oklahoma Sooners um, polo shirt. It's got the stripes on it. It's got a little stain there. You see that little stain right there? I did disclose it, let them know it was a stain, but this shirt wasn't listed very long at all. And somebody uh, bought it for $27.99, uh, free shipping, got full asking price. I think uh, from what I remember looking at the username, uh, you can kind of see it there, secondhand Sooner. So he buys secondhand Oklahoma Sooners items, and this was one that apparently he didn't have. So good sale there. I think I paid $3.99 for this shirt. And I, I am doing a lot of free shipping right now just to see if I can generate more sales. And let me tell you so far, the difference between charging shipping and doing free shipping has not been that different. It is not. 
So um, depending, I may do it for one more month into March and just see what happens. But depending on how that goes, I may go back to charging shipping again because it has not been a big difference. But this is a good sale. I really enjoyed it. Let's go to the next one. All right, here we go. This is uh, vintage. So I, I said 90s, but based on the tag, uh, this could be late 90s. It could be early 2000s. I said 90s just because Beverly Hills 90210 was a big 90s show. Okay. So I don't think this was um, like an original from when the show was still on. But I think this was a shirt that was made and printed in the late 90s, early 2000s. And uh, I got full asking price for this one. $29.99. I paid the shipping. So uh, good sell there. I need some more sales like this. I thought this was a cool shirt. And uh, I, it actually, actually kept it a lot longer than I thought I would. But somebody finally bought it. And I hope they're happy with it. All right, next. Now, this was in my last uh, thrift haul video. I found these two uh, coaches jackets, these windbreakers for like $3.99 a piece. They're Nike, still had the tag on them. I think one was a 3XL, one was a 4XL. It was a Kentucky Wildcats and a Clemson Tigers jacket. Well, the Kentucky Wildcats jacket didn't last 12 hours. This one sold within 12 hours for $34.99. I said in my thrift haul video, I was going to try $24.99, uh, but I said, why not? Just let's try $35, and it sold within 12 hours, and um, I paid the shipping. It went first class. It was still light enough to get first class. Even though it's for a big boy, it's still a light material. So that was a good sell there, and uh, there's actually a lot of views and several watchers on the Clemson Tiger one. I'm just hoping it gets purchased real soon because that would be awesome. All right, and one of my better sales in the past couple weeks I thought this one was going to be hard to sell because it's a very, very small jacket. But it's a vintage 1982 John Denver Celebrity Ski Race Lake Tahoe Heavenly Valley jacket. It says all that on there. You don't believe me? Look at the patches. <laughs> I know it's a mouthful and there's a lot to like put in the title. Um, but I was putting, I, the only thing I didn't get in the title there was Harrah's. But yeah, it's a pretty cool jacket, but it was very small. If you see, it's only 18 across uh, across the chest there, and when you when you wear jackets, you want you know in t-shirt world that would be a small size small t-shirt, but in jacket and coat world you want you want them to fit a little bit bigger. So I put size small, but I I, I told them to check the measurements, and it's only 21 inches long. If you look here, I put in all of them. I put. It's very small, so please check measurements to ensure proper fit. And then I have measurements, and then I have pictures of measurements. I tell them, so um, I haven't gotten feedback on it yet, but this is a $50 sale. I paid the shipping. Um, it would not go first class simply because it being a jacket, it was a little bit more bulky, and it had to go into a priority mailbox. So I had to put it in a box. So that took it a little well over a pound. I don't remember how much I paid for shipping, but it, it was like $7, something like that. So it wasn't, wasn't horrible. Still a good sell. I don't remember how much. I've had this one for a while. I don't remember how much. This is, I thrifted this back before I took my hiatus. So I don't know. I just know it's a good sell. Now the best sell of the past couple weeks was this vintage Looney Tunes uh, Tasmanian Devil motorcycle making dust t-shirt. And I... Uh, these all over print, these all over print shirts. You see, it's got the print all over it from like from the collar down to the hem. Same thing on the back, all over print. These are these are big. These kind of shirts are really big. So the all over print Taz motorcycle t-shirt. I put large to extra large because uh, if you see here, it's a 23. You know, typically like a 24 in the chest is an extra large. So 23, it's kind of in between the large and extra large. That's actually my size. Like, like 23 in the chest is perfect for me. And it was 27 and a half long. I saw these shirts going for good money. I overpriced this one. I probably should have priced this one around 50 bucks. I overpriced it at 74.99. I got a couple offers. Somebody offered me 60 for it. Somebody offered me 40 for it. And I told them it was too new of a listing. So... I was going to ride it out and I'm glad I did because I got full asking price for this. Somebody bought it $74.99. I paid the shipping. 
but it's a really good sale and so definitely look out for it. and probably probably not just looney tunes but anything that has the all over print like i think i think those are just big shirts you know but this one did really well for me and uh i'm really happy about this one so like i said guys i have been struggling and i i voice these frustrations and these struggles like on my twitter and on my instagram if you look here i tweeted out this morning i said i started reselling again january 1st i'm struggling i'm used to doing i used to do three to five hundred per week part time i have 340 listings 112 have zero views 112 of my listings have zero views zero what is that 70 of them only have one view so i asked is this the state of ebay now and i sell in the wrong stuff are they easing me back into the algorithm i didn't get any responses on it that's fine i didn't expect to but i also posted this over on instagram and so far i've gotten a few responses uh this person says consider using mercari i think that's how you say it mercari it's free to list items uh, they show you the fees up front and then charge you when the item sells uh this person little green i 79 says views offers and sales are down for me across all platforms it has been that way since mid last year i wish i had the algorithm silver bullet but i'm struggling as well so it looks like it's not just me and then uh this person says it seems like ebay wants you to buy ads just like facebook so i don't trust them so I don't know what's going on guys i don't know if it's me i don't know if it's the items that i'm purchasing if if it's the way i'm listing or what give me your experiences so i've been out of the ebay game for the past four years so i would like to hear your experiences what's going on with ebay are you seeing a dip in sales or because i see a lot of people buying promotions and that's how they're getting views and that's how they're getting more sales do you have to buy promotions? Do you have to like, you know, buy into this whole, I can only sell stuff if I promote stuff and get more percentages added onto my sales. Is that what eBay's doing? I mean, I don't know, but I know I only have 340 items. It's kind of a small sample size there, but I would like to hear from some of the eBay veterans out there. Like what's going on? Am I doing something wrong or do I just need to be patient? All right, guys, if you've hung in there and you are still with me, I told you we we're going to go over my numbers for January. I want to actually show you the struggles and we're going to go over my numbers for February. And then so far what I've done this year, getting back into the game, starting over from zero, like zero items in the store. Although I did have all these shirts I needed to list from when I resold before. This is what it's been like for me. This is my little spreadsheet I have in Google Drive. Not, I don't know Excel. I I don't know Excel. So this is like, this is some very simple stuff here. Basically you put a negative number here and that's what you spent and you put a positive number. That's what you brought in and it adds it all up here at the bottom. And it tells me, um, you know, my net profit for that month. So as you can see here, uh, in January, I got a net profit of $105 and 68 cents. Okay. Keeping my head above water there, you know, just getting started back, you know, listing items every day it's kind of hard so here february i was a little more active in the thrift stores and sourcing and stuff like that so i ended up uh negative 1347 for february even though i did way more sales i did a lot more sourcing so like i said if you you know don't put a minus beside it it adds it you put a minus it subtracts it and it adds all this up and that's what it gives me at the end there so, so far uh, for 2023 and two months, me getting started back into this, this kind of does the same thing. We got January, February, I've got a withdrawal column, a deposit column, and a total column. So withdrawal, that is how much money I put into this business. That is sourcing, supplies, uh, labels that I have to pay for and print if I make sales on Instagram, anything that money that goes out for this business. And then I did $289.48 in sales in January. Like I said, it was just getting started back. So 105, 68 total. Withdrawal here, I did a lot more sourcing. So uh, negative 
four ninety six eighty eight. Now that that does include some supplies and some stuff like that. So that's not all sourcing, but a lot of that was. And uh, I deposited four hundred eighty three dollars and forty one cents. So I uh, almost doubled my sales from January, but I put a lot more into it this month. So I ended up with negative thirteen forty seven. And so you put these totals in this way and it adds them this way, but it also at the same time adds them down here in the total column. So, so far in two months, I've spent $680 and 68 cents on the business and I have deposited $772 and 89 cents worth of money. And I have only made $92 and 21 cents in uh, two months reselling after a four to five year hiatus. So there you have it guys. That's what it's like part-time reselling, especially kind of starting from zero. You know, if you want to start this, it's not going to happen overnight. It's going to take some time. It's going to take some patience. It's going to take some you investing your money, but be smart with it because you don't want to get into a hole too quick because uh, $92 and 21 cents, that's not where I want to be. It's not how much I want to make in the past two months, uh, but it's I'm not ready to quit yet because of that. You know, if it will, if we're negative over 100 or something like that, you know, I'm really may have to rethink what I'm doing and, and whatnot. So um, that's it. So for you new people, don't get frustrated in the beginning because it will get better because I was in a spot where I was doing four to six hundred dollars a week doing this part time, uh, you know, several years ago. So and I'm hoping to get back there real soon. So thank you guys for tuning in. I hope this was very informative for you. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like the video if this helped you in any way. And if you're new, please subscribe. Come back for more. Follow all the social media down in the comments section. There's a link and I'll show you all my social media. So I uh, hope to hear from some of you guys. Take care and have a good rest of your week. See ya.